Brooke Pillifont, 45, Kyle, Texas, and this is Financial Audit. What do you do for a living? I'm, I actually do a lot of different things for a living, so that's a hard question to answer. Um, but predominantly, I'm a writer, is what I tell people. So oh, I do okay. curriculum development, but then I also founded a nonprofit that does um, literacy and art programming in the county jails. Wow. Okay. Oh, this is really interesting. Because I was seeing as I was going through your checking account, although this is a few months, there were quite a few different sources yes. that were coming in. So, well, so I'm a freelancer ultimately, but... Yeah, let's talk about that first one. So the writer just job in general, what do you think that brings in? Monthly basis, annual basis? That's so at this point, I've been doing it for a while. I have like a clients that just like pop in, pop out. Mm -hmm. Um, but I have some solid clients. So I know I bring in at least three a month. Three thousand? Yeah. Okay, cool. And somewhere around there. I mean it might be twenty five one month, it might be four another, but Sure, sure. But we're just averaging out. Yeah. Three thousand, cool. Setting 30% aside for taxes? Always. Good. Okay. No, okay, because maybe not totally. What? I what don't know. I don't, I just, I'm not super great at that. I do save, but I don't necessarily think of it as 30% for taxes. So what happens when tax season comes? What do you do? I have a savings account and I just take it out and I go, oh, oh look, okay. there it is. So you just have a general savings account yeah. and you're like, here's yeah. the bill. And I just try to chuck some in there every month. Mm, so have you had any issues with the tax bill when it's No, come up? no, I haven't. Okay. Luckily, cool. no. Oh, that's definitely a way to do it. Yeah. Um, I like, you know, personally, when I just manage my own money, I like to make sure I'm getting the best return out of every single dollar that comes in. So I'm like, I set 30% aside because it's going to be somewhere around there when taxes come in. And then I, I know beyond that, I'm able to utilize the other money to make sure it's growing faster than inflation, at least. Okay. So, so with that writer position with one of my clients, I actually have a quote unquote full-time position with them. So I do mm. like pay taxes through all of that. Mm. And is then, that included in the 3000? No. Oh, what's that? What is so that? it would be six total. Wow. So that's an additional three. Yeah. Oh, very cool. And what is that full-time job? So that's a curriculum developer for a real estate company. Okay. That's that one. Okay. A real estate very school. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Very cool. So, three, so okay, three thousand that you owe taxes on. Eventually, three thousand that's W two, so it gets taxed. Right. And then you mentioned a nonprofit. Do you get anything from that? I usually take in about 500, five hundred, five to eight hundred a month. And what does the nonprofit do? Um, we do the financial, not financial. I'm sorry, <laughs> literacy. We do like um, storytelling, writing, creative writing, and we do um, like art programming for inmates. Oh, very cool. And that yeah. has a website. Yeah. Okay, it's linked in the description below, so if <laughs> okay. you want to check it out. Oh, and speaking of that, make sure uh, you're subscribed, because I'm really trying to get to 100,000 subscribers, and we're really close. You guys are awesome, uh, so please consider subscribing. And checking out our website as well, which is linked below. So that's really cool. That brings in 500, so we're looking at 6,500. And then any other sources? Well, I um, I have child support. That that comes to you? Okay. That comes to me, and yeah. And what is that about? 2,700. Okay. Until this year. And then I have one going off to college, so it'll drop. Mm. So how old are your kids? 17, 14, 13, 11. That's a lot. It is a lot. It was more than I expected. <laughs> but okay. I love them all. Very cool. So uh, the the person that you're with that divorce is official? Yes, and all it that has stuff. been for a long time, like 10 years Child now. Child support, yeah. okay. Gotcha. All right, so we are looking at a pretty good chunk of change that comes in on a monthly basis. That's, uh, or are there even more on top of that? No, no, that's all I can think of. Okay. Well, I mean, no, that's not, sorry. Now that I, now you asked me, I thought of another one. So I have 500 a month that comes in from commercial real estate that I own. Really? Oh, very cool. I didn't pick up a hint of that in the documents when I was looking for that. So that's really cool. Where do you own property? In Dallas. The, is this like you own it with a group of people? Or? I own it with my brother and my cousin. Really? It was given to us in a trust from my grandfather like oh, since wow. we were little. And so. What is it? Could you speak on it a little bit, the property? Um, it's just a property that um, we rent out to air gas, actually. Okay. So. What is that? Yeah, I, don't, I honestly have never even seen it. No, it's um, one of the, they do the big tanks of like oxygen and nitrogen okay. and all of that. Is it like a warehouse? I've I never seen so. it. I've never seen it. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Yeah. Well, that's cool. And like, note to self, maybe you should like <laughs> go on Google and look at it. And your cash flow is about five hundred dollars a month. Your portion that comes in. That comes in. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, cool. I mean, these are a lot of great sources. How obviously you don't? It sounds like you just don't do much when it comes to that property. 
No, I do nothing. Okay. Yeah, sorry to sound, yeah. And then the child support, you know, obviously taking care of the children, that takes up time. Uh, and then their nonprofit, and then the two writing positions. Well, one's like a lot of writing positions, and <laughs> one's more concrete. Yes. How, what does your month look like? What does your week-to-week look like? How just, like, crazy busy are you? This, this looks crazy busy to me. Um, I don't feel crazy busy, except for when I stop to think about it. So, I mean, I, <laughs> I have a lot of energy, so I'm always on the go. And I just, yeah, you just learn to juggle everything. I like it because there's always something different going on. And I've always got mm-hmm. something like, oh, I've got to do this. Or I've got to write these articles for that client. Or I'm writing a, you know, a curriculum for this rare disease. Or I'm looking at this, you know. Mm. So, I like being a jack-of-all-trades Mm, okay how many hours a week do you think you work average uh i track it all through toggle usually and i would say 40 or less oh okay cool yeah sometimes 30 okay so how would you describe your overall financial personal financial situation where you stand in life right now i would say i feel pretty good at the moment i am petrified of retirement um i have like a lot of anxiety about that Mm. so um so yeah kind of like my big plan is to be a um, to like milk goats in a commune because I'm not what? sure I'm going to have enough. <laughs> I don't know. I keep hearing all these people say like, oh, you have to have a million dollars, you know, at least to retire. And if you have a million dollars, then you'll get 30,000 a year off the, you know, yeah, roughly. Say, yeah. yeah. And I'm like 30,000 a year. Okay. Well, that's not terrible. Like if your house is paid for and you don't really have any bills, but like my house isn't paid for and I have four children and I still have to put them through college. And like, mm. there's just all of these things that sort of like, wow, that is maybe take a deep breath think about. Yeah. yeah. So is the home paid for? No. Okay. What is the remaining mortgage on that? Okay. Uh, a lot. Oh boy. All right. Not a you, ton. you built it. You mentioned before you built yeah, it. Yeah. I just built it right before the pandemic. So that was awesome. Um, and, and I, is it just you or are you uh, married again? I have a partner. Partner, but it's not an official marriage, so no. nothing's combined officially. No, I'm the, I'm the only financial person in our house. Oh, okay. So uh, your partner doesn't bring in any money? No. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and that's fine. So let's talk about the house yeah. again. What, what's the remaining mortgage? I don't know what the remaining mortgage is. I know we um, maybe Wait. somewhere like 250 I'm thinking. So not crazy. I no. know you're going <laughs> to well, for this area. Yeah, yeah. This area, it's, it's kind of insane. So I put a lot down. I took a bunch of the money I got. From, what did you put down? I think I put 75 down. Okay. So it was like 320. I think the house so was 320. Build a house? Yeah. So and Kyle. You built it I'm pretty far Kyle. outside of yeah. Boston. Okay. So when did you do that? 19, 19. Yeah. 19. <laughs> no, 2000. I'm sorry. Um, was it 2018? Okay, so the interest rate is probably... Super low. Okay. Yeah, I got the last like really awesome interest rate, so I can't refinance. What was that, 3%, 4%? Okay, so here's the deal on that. Um, my ex-husband trashed my credit, Ooh. like so horrible. I used to own three houses, and then he just didn't make the payments on them when he got them in the divorce and didn't take my name off of them. Mm. So the banks foreclosed on them. Uh, and you know, I had really angry renters yelling at me when I was like, I can't do anything for you. So, um, I couldn't actually purchase a house. So my parents actually took my money and they bought the house. So Mm. they technically own the house, but they've deeded me like 90% of it. Yeah. It's like a weird thing, but so I don't technically, no, no, all three of those houses are long gone. He, Uh, he foreclosed on all of them. Jeez. Okay. Why did he, Why? That's a really good question that I can't answer. And you didn't want to try to... I didn't even know it was happening. Well, you didn't know it was happening until it already happened. Yeah. Yeah. That's brutal. I'm sorry, that sucks. Yeah. We'll look at your credit. I'm curious. That's... Oh, yeah. My credit went from like an 820 to like... I don't know. I think I was a little below 400 for a little while. Yeah. No, it was really terrible. And I've been working like the last eight years to like bring it back up. And I'm, I think the last I looked, I was at like 731 now. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, so I'm, I'm okay. okay. But just at this point, it's not worth refinancing. Sure. I'm like trying to get. What well, was the interest rate on this house then? I have no idea. Mm. I'm so sorry. I, I should be better at my finances, I think, by being able to answer these questions. Maybe it's like 3.1%. Okay. 3.2%, 3.5%, something like that. What's your like mortgage? Um, 1987 a month. 1987, not Yeah, I know. It's easy to remember. Not bad for the area. So, like, I all. can't rent for cheaper than that. And that certainly fits within your overall budget. The child support is about is a third-ish, though, and you, you said that will be decreasing. 
Because you yeah. mentioned quite a few ages. One's going off the college. It sounded like a couple more will be pretty soon. Pretty soon. So in the next five years, I'll have three of them out and in college. Okay. Then this mortgage will take up... A lot more. You know, a higher percentage. But my plan is to either get a roommate or rent out the rooms through Airbnb. I mean, you it's don't a want big that, place. do you? Or do you actually want really that? I don't. I don't really want a roommate, but I wouldn't mind renting out through Airbnb or just renting the whole house out and like living somewhere way smaller. Mm. Well, what is it? What is it now? Square footage? Twenty four hundred. Ooh, okay. And yeah. beds and bath? Four bedroom, three bath. Okay. Two like two a living room, and then we also have like an upstairs loft, and we have a downstairs like open room. Okay. So technically it could be a six bedroom, mm -hmm. close it in. So, okay. Well, yeah. for what it is, I'm happy with this. Even, well, hmm, hmm, let's see here. Now you know why I fear retirement. I don't think you have, well, so far, there's nothing that's like screaming to me that's terrifying. We'll continue to look in and we'll see. I think at, at that point, it will still be just under 30% of your take home. Well, uh, no, because some of this is before taxes, but it'll still just be around 30% ish. Okay. And I think that'll be comfortable. And that's after all the child support is gone. So it's okay. Okay. You might that's have good. to manage some things a little bit. Maybe some of your categories are a little higher right now that have to be brought down. I'm not sure. Well, I would say that, like, definitely my categories are higher, like, as far as food goes and, mm -hmm. like, items of clothing, because you have to, you know, feed all these people <laughs> and clothe them. And they grow very quickly, so they can't just, like, reuse clothes. Mm -hmm. um, and, like, yeah, I mean, I guess vacations would be cheaper because I'm not paying for five people to travel. Right. I would just be paying for myself to go visit them kind sure, of thing. Sure, sure. So, yeah. Okay. Well, we are definitely going to talk about the college funds because you mentioned sending them to college. So, it sounds like potentially paying for it. We'll, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about this home, retirement, and all that stuff. But first, we're going to start with your checking account, then we'll look at your savings, then we'll look at some retirement portfolios we have, and then a debt as well that is outside of that mortgage debt. And then we'll get into all that good stuff. Okay, sounds great. So your checking account. Uh, at the point of this statement ending, $5,364 sitting in there. I'm very comfortable with that. Okay, yeah. No, I feel pretty good with it. Yeah. Yeah. Kinda. Now. Kind of. You have two credit cards. So. Yes. You pretty much do all the spending on there. So there's not too much to talk about here. Really what it is, we have credit card payments and you Venmo out a lot of money. It looks like you Venmo out almost $2,000 a month. That's the mortgage to my mom. Oh, okay. Yeah. So are you on this at all? Are you on the mortgage at no, all? No, not at all. I'm just on the deed. You're on the deed. Okay. Don't love that, but I understand it in this situation yeah. you are in. Is, hmm. Yeah. I didn't really have any other opportunity. No, I gotcha. I just wish it was, I wish it was on your credit. Yeah, me too. Well, one of the yeah. things I've been like looking into is having my mom actually report it as if I were a renter. Okay. So that then it does get on my credit report. So that's actually on my list of things. Isn't that Experian only that takes that into account? Though? I could be mistaken on that. I don't know. Um, I just, I superficially dug into it and like the person has to pay, I think the person has to pay a fee to be able to like oh, register it that way, oh, but you okay. can still do it. I just have to figure out how to do it. Sure. Cause yeah. I think it would, I mean, obviously it would, it would bolster my credit quite a bit. Yeah. I'm going to look into that as well. That's, that's interesting. Cause I know at least proposed changes have been talked about. I don't So, uh, but that, that's, that's still Okay. And your relationship with her is good? Oh, fantastic. Good. Yeah, yeah. Well, because what we don't want to see, and we've seen situations in, in this show in terms of like rent and stuff like that with family members where yeah. not, it's not great. Because I mean, well, it's your I mean, living it is family, situation. So it ebbs and flows, right? It is. I just don't want like the rug to be pulled under you. Like, oh, no. I own this house. Yeah. No, my parents would never do okay. that. Yeah. And I want to make sure it 100% goes to you. Yes. Okay. Yes. They've actually been really, really awesome. And they've set it up in their will to make sure that everything like goes to me. So very cool. Good. Yeah. I'm happy to hear that. Which is really awesome of them. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of your money, most of it just goes to the credit card payments. And then there's utilities and stuff as well. So again, not crazy. And lots of income sources coming in. Really not too much to mention here. The credit cards. We are going to look at your credit cards yeah. first before we go into savings because this is spending related so let me go ahead and come over here on your chase freedom 
Well, it says new balance, $3,607. Do you ever hold balances on credit cards? No, no, I don't. So I kind of did a weird thing because um, a long time ago, my ex was causing a lot of problems financially and he would like decide he didn't feel like paying child support anymore or make up. Anyway, it's a long story not to get into, but it um, caused a bit of trepidation. Sure. And I got worried that like what would happen if all of a sudden he's like chooses not to pay and then I can't pay and then there's like an issue. So I actually have my credit card prepaid one month ahead. Okay. So like everything's like I technically every month have a zero payment. Mm -hmm. I just go ahead and pay the balance at that time so that I have two months just in case like life ever threw me a curveball or something terrible happened that I could be, I could live for at least a month and not, and like find any job anywhere. Sure. Sure. And that's where emergency funds come in, which We'll get to your savings. I think we're looking pretty good there as well. But let's look through here. Definitely some fun stuff like Raceway and going. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We went on a ski vacation. Mm. So my my kids opt to get no Christmas presents. Oh, okay. To go on a ski vacation every year. So, and then I do buy them presents. Like I really do. I don't even, I don't even like... Not a lot. Just like a couple things to open. And there's lots <laughs> of going out as well to eat and... You know, gas and lows and lots of going out to eat. It looks like it's just, it's a, it, it kind of looks like a fun card. HEB is sprinkled in every once in a while, but yeah. the vast, vast, vast majority, and we're, you know, putting it on the screen for a lot of this stuff, it's just fun and coffee and toll roads and subscriptions like Netflix. And then again, sprinkle in yeah. some groceries. So. December is kind of my fun month. Like I feel like I work really hard and then December comes and it's <laughs> like, all right, it's the holidays. We're going to go out and we're going to oh, have fun and November. with family. <laughs> if that's holidays that counts. I feel like anything after <laughs> October 31st is the holidays. Okay. <laughs> so what well, makes me a little nervous here, $3,607 spent there, 2000 to the mortgage. And then on the other card, 4955 spent. That's all your money's. Oh, oh, sorry. I think I lost you. I try to keep my card somewhere between like 3,500 and 3,000. So yeah, 36 seems pretty standard for holidays, but then I pay it, paid it off. And then yeah, was the other one, 43. It might've been oh, is more. Oh, what I'm looking at the same card? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah I see. You, you have another card though. Capital one, right? Yep. It's just a backup card. I don't actually do anything in case I lose the other card. Oh. I just have a card and every now and then I'll charge on it. Okay. So most of it's done on the chase freedom. Everything's on the Chase Freedom. Okay, so never mind. It's not. It's not as scary as I thought it was. Because okay. I was looking through both tabs, and then I was like, You're "Wait, like, I think oh my this gosh. is the same." Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, I mean, it's still a lot of money. It's like five thousand six hundred spent on this card, and then your mortgage, and then there's utilities and stuff on that. So it is a lot of your money. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. How do you feel about your overall budgeting situation and how you manage your money? So I feel like that these months are kind of an anomaly compared to my other months because I generally give myself a hundred to one hundred and twenty dollars a day for my budget. Hundred. So that comes out to be like different categories. No, just just like everything I spend. So I like in my head, I think to myself, okay, you have about a hundred to one hundred twenty dollars to spend every day. Well, if you spend three hundred today, then you need to not spend as much for the next two days so that you can balance (laughs) everything out. Does that make sense? It's an interesting way to do it. That's a stressful way to do it in my mind. Yeah. I prefer like, here's the categories. Here's what I'm allowed to spend on a monthly basis in order to make sure I'm hitting the goals that I'm trying to hit. Like I hadn't thought of it that way. Like just even in a crazy example thousand dollars in fast food let's say that's what you can spend but if you've hit a thousand dollars in fast food and it's on the 28th of the month then you want to go get mcdonald's uh-uh because you already passed your thousand dollar limit you're splitting things up in different categories what you're allowed to spend because you know your total pie that comes in on average and you budget out on average now if you know you're gonna have a lower month okay in the season then you budget around that if you know you're having a higher month you can budget around that i prefer the rest to go to savings but you know stuff like that does that make sense? Instead Kinda. of instead of like a hundred, but then I would like get weird and I would want to like make an Excel spreadsheet and like count it down and yeah. do all of that. And instead of just in my head, I'm like, did I hit a hundred today? No, I didn't. Or like I'll check my credit card because I do everything on my credit card. Mm-hmm. Well, except for the Venmo to my mom for the mortgage and stuff like that. But other than that, I just like I'll check my. Okay, so maybe this is a little neurotic, but I have like a day planner and sometimes I'll go through and I'll be like, for each day in like the calendar, I'll be like, okay, here was 75, here's 40, here's 160. And then I'll just kind of like look back and in my head, I'll go like plus 30, minus 20, plus 10, like that. 
That is the way to do it. <laughs> I just wouldn't be surprised if that's adding extra stress that you don't no, necessarily no. think about. Okay. But All right. I'm apps. willing for a new I'm willing for a new strategy. Budgeting and apps, and there's a lot of them. There's a lot of good ones. Okay. And I'm hoping one of them will sponsor me, but they haven't yet. Well, let me know who they are and I'll say their name several times. <laughs> but there's a lot of budgeting apps that will connect to all your accounts and it will show what's being spent in specific categories. And then you can say what your limits are for each on a monthly basis and it'll tell you where you oh, are. And okay. the highly recommend. That's a great way instead of having to get into that Excel spreadsheet life. Right. Yeah, so not that, my favorite life. Yeah, because a little chaotic right now with how you're doing it. But it's okay because in the general savings account, we have $68,204. Yeah. That's good. That's an emergency fund. That's a really good emergency fund. I think with what you just spend, I'd probably have $30,000 minimum, maybe go towards $40,000, sustain you for six months, never needing to get a single paycheck. Right. I think yeah. thirty to 40000 would be great for you. So I think this is actually okay. a little over. That being said, you also take from here to pay for your taxes. Right. And because you're not organizing that in a specific way, I think this is okay. This is where we get you know a little more nuanced with our financial behaviors. And we say, okay, so $40,000, that's what I need to survive. You put that in, I don't know what this is in, but you put that in a high yield savings account, something that's getting you three, close to, close to even 4% today. Okay. So it's, you know, continuing to at least keep up with normal inflation. Um, and it's only at that right now because interest rates are pretty high right now or on the climb. Okay. So you leave that $40,000 and you never touch it. That's not used for taxes. It's not used for anything unless an emergency happens. And oh. then you can use it and then you rebuild it as quick as you can. Okay. And then the taxes, what I would do for this money that's coming in that isn't already taxed, 3000 or 30% of it, I'd I need to just put in into a different savings account and separate okay. them. Have two different savings accounts? Yeah. Oh. And you can do something like Ally Financial where there's different buckets you can put it in. So one savings account, but you can put them in different mini accounts within them. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's a good way to do it. But again, we just want the emergency fund separate because it's something we don't think it about. We never touch ever. it. Yeah. Okay. Unless something happens. And then we're saving up 30% on the side around that for taxes. Uh, okay. I hadn't thought about doing two savings accounts before. Because <laughs> one thing I don't want you to do is I don't, I don't want you to save too much. And then especially in a low yield savings account, we're just, we're losing money with inflation. Right. No, that makes sense. Yeah. I asked the guy who helped me. So last year, my goal, my like financial goal was to like combine all my retirement accounts into like one single account and like mm. figure out where everything was mm -hmm. um, so that it was actually doing something and not just like <laughs> sitting there. Sure. Um, so I did that, but then I called the guy and I was like, Hey, and this is a while back. And I was like, should I put some of this extra money from my savings account into these things? And he was like, well, the market's actually going to turn. I wouldn't put anything in the market. Right when did now. you say that? I don't know. I think it was like nine months ago, 10 months ago. Hmm. That's fine. I, don't know. I mean, typically the way I do it, this is not official financial advice. It's only what I do because I don't give investing advice. What I do, market up, down, climbing, sinking, due to dollar cost averaging across the basis. When you're putting money in, I put it in on a consistent monthly basis. And then something like the S&P 500, taking advantage of that dollar cost averaging over the course of a decade. Typically, but from the start to where it is now, the S&P 500 averages out, down, up, down, up, 10% gain. Oh, so, so maybe I should like look at doing something like that with my money? What I would personally do and what I'm doing now, since the market is at a point where it's down, I am putting money in because this is going to be, at some, even if it continues to go down, this is definitely going to be considered a dip. And I'd be right. getting in at Get a low a good, point. Right. So then, okay, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. I was on someone's stream the other day and I was talking about the S&P 500 and people thought I was, well, they don't know anything about finances. There, it wasn't a stream that was finances related. And they thought I was a lunatic for instead of putting money in at the peak of the market and putting everything in at the peak, that I was putting money in when the market's slightly more volatile right now. And I'm like, what are you guys talking about? Because it's going gonna, it it's gonna to make up, so right? much more money over the long term in turn, instead of them where they were only putting money in at the peak and they refused to put money in at what will eventually be considered a dip. It was really huh. weird. It was very weird. So that's my mindset around that. I hope that makes sense. But I want to make sure yeah. that the money is working for you. But we can look at the retirement accounts. Okay. The 401k. Um, I might become a goat milker. <laughs> okay. The 401k, is this through that real estate writing 
position? So if that's the one, yes, this one is. Yeah. Okay. And you're getting 100% on your return I maxed through, it out. through the yeah. company match. You're getting 100% up to 3%, then 50%. I thought you were supposed to max to it out, so I was just max it out. Sure. Why not? I mean, no. I mean, that's great. Uh, there's some, again, nuances to maximize, but that's what I cannot see in this. All the other ones I can see where they're going. This one, I cannot see what your 401k is invested in. Oh, I have no idea. Hmm. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, I have, I have no clue. When did you set up this 401k? Uh, when I started working for them. It was just kind of like, do you want to set it up? And I clicked yes and walked through and the did steps. Did you click a fund of some kind? I think kind? I clicked high because I was like, well, I'll just make some... High? high well, it's like high risk, medium risk, low risk or something like that. You did high? And I just clicked high risk because okay. I was like, well, I mean, why not? Okay. No, it, you don't max this out. Um, oh, I don't? No, you put 5% and you take the match. You take the max oh. match, but you're not maxing oh. out your 401k. Okay. Yeah. All right. Because yeah. 401k, you can uh, put in a lot more on an annual Should basis. Should you? Well, again, there's nuances, and we can talk about that depending what okay. the rest of the situation looks like. All right. But that's okay. I would like to know what they're in, but yeah. Um, these other ones, we do know what they're in. Okay, you good. You do have Ooh. something here, and I can't... Well, you can tell me exactly what this one is. What is this account specifically? So I think that this might be a, is it a Roth IRA? Oh, okay. So I think I have a traditional IRA and I have a Roth IRA. Okay, and you think the one that's at 18,000 versus it's the one that's at 26,000 yeah. is Roth? No, I think the traditional IRA is the one that's like at 100 something. Oh, then what's the difference between the 26,000 and the 18,000? That's good. Unless, are these that's a good question. just... My, one might just oh. be... Um, like assets that's being invested, and then the other one is the Roth IRA. I think that's Roth how that IRA? works. Okay. Um, I, sh I should know more about my money, I feel like now. <laughs> <laughs> like you're asking me these questions, and I'm like, I don't know. Well, these are both pretty similar. We have uh, it's spread across the Dow Jones, NASDAQ, SP 500, Amex, interestingly enough, just a random company being put yeah, in Yeah, I, I don't like to do anything with this. 10-year treasury, uh, but it's, it's pretty small percentages of your overall portfolio. Right now, those are the ones doing well, but again, over the long term, personally, that's not something I get into. Well, I mean, I, I would... You said you're 45? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I probably would switch uh, getting a little more into the bonds game, maybe in my 50s and 60s. Just okay make it a little lower risk throughout retirement is an option. That's something that a lot of people talk about. The, the money guy show, they talk about that. And that's, um, so all the retirement I had was cashed out by my ex-husband. Well, so this is me starting over from scratch. Did you sue him? He can't just do that. Can I mean, yeah, he can. Well, no, no, no. Well, he the cashed it all out. Well, in the settlement and the divorce, what was agreed yeah. upon? Well, it was done before the divorce. Did you ever talk to a lawyer about that? Oh, yeah, yeah. And I spent a lot of money do? on lawyers. There's nothing I could do about it. <sighs> How much was it? 250000 Yeah, dang. When was the divorce? Mm, about 10 years ago. To the, uh, wow. 2015, it became final. Yeah, and that yeah. probably would have been like 500000 today, maybe, maybe, something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't have to pay the taxes on it coming out, so that was good. Yeah. Yeah, so those kind of things I got to set aside, and then I had saved a bunch of money, and then it, um, some of it got stolen. So then stolen? Was, How? From where? From what? So what was stolen? Like cash from my house. I was like saving money, and I had some cash in the house. And this is why we don't do cash. What? Well, yeah, much was I know. Stolen? I know. A super. St I really don't. I don't want to tell you because it's super embarrassing. Range. Fifty thousand. Yeah. It's a lot of money. Yeah. yeah, we don't do that. Nope, nope. It was super stupid, and I, like, I blame myself a lot for it, but at the same time, like, I thought that I was safe in my own home, and I was helping out. Um, mm. Yeah. <sighs> so that has happened over the last couple of years, so I just feel like I've taken several hits in the last 10 years that have made sure. me feel really um, financially stressed, and so I don't really... Like, when I look at this, I'm like, okay, yeah, I mean, it seems really nice, but, like, I guess I just have, like, all these fears that, like, what happens? This isn't actually that much. Yeah, I'm definitely understanding a little more now when you said you're anxious about retirement. Yeah. I understand it. 
So uh, we don't know which one's the Roth specifically or which one's just a brokerage. But again, you think this one, the 26000 is the Roth? It doesn't say it either doesn't, of them. Yeah. I don't know. But either way. I think that this one, wait, let's see. What's the initial, maybe if I knew what the initial value was, I might be able to figure it out. But I don't know. I don't know. Well, prior and. I'm not touching any of this is kind of like my, my thought well, is sure. like, I don't. I don't touch it. I just put money into it. So, yeah. And then again, the other account. So the eighteen thousand dollar account, twenty six thousand dollar account. They're distributed in, into different things, like the Dow Jones, Nasdaq, S and P five hundred, the Amex, and then a few Treasuries as well. Uh, pretty much the same on both. So, okay, cool. Uh, if those were your only two accounts, I would definitely be concerned at forty five. But we'll look at your larger account now. Yeah, I don't large esque. Largest. <laughs> All right, so this one you said is your traditional IRA? Yes. Okay, so was it rolled over from like a previous 401k? Yeah, there were a whole bunch of different ones like from different places that I had yeah. worked and um, they were kind of like, oh, you've got one with ING and you've got one with this person over here and one mm -hmm. over there. And so I just was like, okay, let's just put it all into one big thing instead of letting it just sit somewhere rotting. Yeah, okay, so, so that makes sense. And then this, again, your distribution into different funds it's a, again exactly the same. Dow Jones, Nasdaq, S and P five hundred, Amex, thirty year Treasury, ten year Treasury. Uh, so okay, and this one's sitting at one hundred three thousand seven hundred fifty one. Of course, all these accounts have taken a little bit of yeah, poo. That's okay. Up down. We're not worrying about it right now. Okay. Because because it's not coming out, right? You so probably won't retire for twenty years, right? I, I don't know. When, when do people when do you retire? Want to retire? Uh, I don't know that I ever really want to retire. I actually really like sure. working. Fair enough. So, but I mean, like. So I don't know. When do you, well, eventually distributions will be required to take out, but when do you plan on withdrawing from these accounts? I guess I should say. I guess when I need them. That sounds like a really yeah. like tight answer. But I, I mean, I'm thinking like, oh, okay. If I have like some kind of medical issue when I get older, but like. You have a health savings account at all? No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do I need one? It's not, it's. Uh, it, if it's offered through your work, I mean, it's a oh yeah, it's a tax tax advantage account. It's a good way to uh, take care of medical expenses, but it's not my it's it's not a glaring error by any okay. means right. in here. Like I'm not freaking out about it, but since you said that specifically, I was yeah, curious. no, I just like I actually have never really even thought about that question. I just like I'm like yeah. okay, well, we'll just go until we go, and then we'll see how it goes. I guess I would probably try to figure that out. It's been so long since I haven't had four kids that I'm sort of like, <laughs> I don't know what happens after they leave the house and like what expenses mm. look like. And, you know, you hope everyone's employed and, you know, maybe they can survive on their own. <laughs> <laughs> One hopes. So I don't even know what like life looks like in sure. 15 years. So sure. my plan is figure it out in 15 years, which... Isn't always the best well, way to Well, we'll get to some planning. <laughs> and again, we're, we're going to loop back to things, but we have one more thing to go through, a okay. debt. I do not know what this debt is for. It has oh. an overall balance of $5,281 with a minimum monthly payment of $921. What is this? Okay, that's my car. That's a vehicle. What's yeah. the interest rate on this? I don't know. You ask me these questions, I have no idea. <laughs> it's important to know, especially oh, no. on a vehicle loan. Okay. okay. Do you have credit Re karma on your phone? Okay, so the vehicle loan that I got for this was when my ex-husband trashed my credit and <laughs> they would they were the only people who would give me oh, a loan so it's for probably anything. Very bad. Oh, it's probably absolutely wretched. And they were like, well, you've never missed a payment on a car. So we'll give you a loan. I put a bunch of money down on it. And then I pay $300 a month. What's the car? It's a, a Dodge Durango. Year? 2000. I always forget this. I think it's 14, 2014. Okay. Do okay. you have credit karma downloaded on your phone? No. We'll get you to download it real quick. Okay. Yeah, 731. Nice. Yeah, okay, so that feels good. That's like th three, almost 400 points higher than it was like yeah. eight years ago. After he trashed you? Yeah. yeah absolutely. Come and make it a comeback. <laughs> <laughs> Payment history, 100%. Good. Credit card use. Okay, so everything's falling off. Good, good, good. Total account's 23. I, yeah, still, mm hmm. Okay, you're going to look at me like that. I have no idea. But I know some of the accounts that he didn't take me off of are still on there. Capital One that you say you don't use that says there's $3,670 on there. Okay. Yeah. Go on. So I let my partner use my credit card. So he's paying that one off. That's not on my debt. I he mean, is paying it off. Yeah, though. he is paying it off. Totally? Or yeah. It's totally all his charging. No, like, is he paying it off like, we're going to pay it off in a few months or we're paying it off like this month? 
Well, you'd like to pay it off this month, all of it, but it's he's been giving me you. about a thousand dollars a month to pay it off. Why don't you just pay it off and have him pay you back? Because the interest rate. Uh, yeah, no, the interest rate's crazy. It's like forty bucks a month. Yeah, you're paying and interest. Technically, it's hitting your credit. Oh, the interest payment makes well, a difference. It's only 19% utilization. So the good news is it's okay. I saw 3,670 and I was like, okay, that's probably relatively high utilization compared to normal. So that would hurt the credit. Not, oh. not, not paying okay. out and not the interest accruing. Um, but it's 19%, so it is below the 30. Okay. It's, well, it's it, fine if you want to. Hopefully, in the it next two months, it's paid off, is kind of the idea. So yeah. uh, okay. if not, if not, then I'll know to pay it and, and do it a different way. Yeah. Okay. So here's the car 58% paid off. Or 68%, sorry. Okay, so it's a 73-month term, which I hate. Yeah, well, I had zero options had when it came to options. the car. Yeah. Uh, typically, sometimes... I had can... to cry just to get him to give me a loan. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, sort of kidding. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it can guess on here, uh, and quite accurately, what the interest rate is. And that was my curiosity. Okay, how far off were you? It's not guessing. Is oh. the hard part. So I don't know. I'm still assuming it's bad. Yeah, I would make that assumption. I think you're correct. Okay. Then it we could can be talk worse about than that. What I would do. A lot of the other accounts are just closed accounts. So never mind. It wasn't okay. that crazy. Right. It was those Ooh. old accounts. So let's do a couple things here. This retirement account, because we definitely need to talk about retirement right. as one of your larger anxieties. We have 103751 in one. We have. 26, 169, and another, and we have, what was it, 18? Oh, and 30. I just put in six more in December. I put my full six in for the year and my for traditional. Good. I put in traditional because they told me I could, um, I could write it off on my taxes that way instead of putting it into the Roth, and I can't write it off. So this year I chose to do traditional rather than Roth. And that's fine. If you were earlier in life, I'd be like, just do Roth. Yeah, I know, Take but I'm not a spring chicken anymore. My 45 is not old. No, it's not spring, though. It's definitely sure. summer. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm a summer chicken. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can vibe with that. Okay. And, oh, the car. The car. So the car, I put it somewhere, and I'm getting lost in all the paper. The car is... Oh, what have I done? We have just about $70,000 sitting in savings, right? Yeah. About yeah. Right? About that. 68. Still... Yeah. 68, 70. Where it is. Okay. I like set a savings goal every year and I'm like, this year I'm going to save $30,000 or this year I'm going to save, you know, $25,000. <laughs> okay. So big picture. Here's the goals. Okay. Not official financial advice. What I would do if I were in your shoes, you have a payoff amount on your car of 5292 5, Yeah. Uh, the moment I get home, I'd open up the computer. I'd go to the payoff amount and be like, okay, payoff. From okay. your savings. Okay, for real, because like, yes. I have sometimes um, thought like, okay, is it worth it? It's building my credit, right, to pay mm -hmm. it every month, so I've been it doing is. that. And then I was like, what am I actually going to save in interest? Because I'm really not paying that much interest mm -hmm. anymore, because it's the end of the, the well, loan. Does that make the, sense? You're in the second half of it. So my... So yeah. those were my thoughts. I mean, that was my rationale that I was like, Well, you're oh, losing payments. $30 in interest a month right now, currently. Oh, okay. Times 12. That this gives what me, what, right like $30, $360 a year? And it sure does help. Yes. And it sure does help with the building the credit as well. So there's a few things. What I would... I would still, I would still do it because I don't like okay. to. One, the car is a little older at this point. It is. Uh, so I wouldn't want to have debt on a depreciating asset that is could be entering in its later years. Yes, it's like, definitely not a spring chicken. Yeah, you yeah. never know with the car, <laughs> and I'm not a car person, so I definitely can't say for sure. Okay. But I wouldn't want to have debt on that. It's just an easier situation if something were to happen to it. You know. Okay, so at this point, it, maybe it's not worth holding on to to build the credit because maybe not. What I would extra do to confirm, so I would just go and check out what that interest rate is. Again, you're right. Okay. You did mostly pay the It might be 7 or 8%. So far, but. Okay. And if that is the case, even still, now that you're entering the more principal area, so, you know, $30 in interest is what you're paying on. Yeah. Month. I hate paying interest. It makes me angry. It's annoying. <laughs> it makes me super mad. And it would be great, especially as child support payment starts to decrease, that 
Oh, that's a good point. A bill's gone. Okay. Yeah. No, no, no. That makes sense. And your savings is even if it, even if we weren't even thinking about the credit and even if this was a zero interest loan at this point, because your savings is just at a really good place and we're anxious about retirement and monthly bills, all that stuff. Then with the $70,000, I'd cut five out of it and the car's gone. Car is owned. Okay. Yeah. And one thing we can do. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. The more I'm thinking about it, I'm like, yeah, okay, that frees up another 300 a month, Mm -hmm. which then when the child support goes down, I've been really concerned about like, okay, how am I going to like make all the ends meet? I mean, Mm -hmm. one child doesn't eat $800 worth of food a month, you know, so. Sure. And I want to help them while they're in college. So then there's more money coming out and less coming in. And I still want to talk about that. We'll get there. This one thing you can do with the $300, you can then pretend like, it doesn't exist and put it in the... You, know, you can take the $300 and maybe put it into a third savings bucket. And you can, okay. since your car is... It's not old. It's not old. It's just not new. a new car either. And We're again, both summer I don't, chickens. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know that car and the longevity of that car. How many miles does it have? 136,000. I would start putting this $300 into another bucket and that's your car fund. And then when your car okay. either has a repair that's not worth it right. for the car or it just breaks... Okay. Um, then. So I've been really lucky because my partner is mechanic, like oh, he has good. mechanical skills. Yeah. That's and so great. he's really good at fixing car things and doing stuff like that. So that is great, that's yeah. been super helpful and saved us a lot of money. Mm-hmm. So. Cause eventually what will happen is, you know, a repair oh, will yeah. be too expensive for it and it will break. And then hopefully your car fund at that point that you're saving up $300 a month for, you can use that to, to get put a car down. in cash. Not to put down. Oh. No, there's no more need to borrow at this point in your well, life. I'm really ready to like, you know, get a smaller car too. Okay. Yeah. Well, then you definitely can. And we're going to aim to get it in cash because as you are heading in the years of really trying to maximize retirement, well, let's just not have a monthly bill, especially a monthly bill where the, again, at the beginning, it's all going to interest and not principal. And as we just want less payments possible as some of the income starts to go away. And okay. they want to be putting yeah. money in places. So that's what I would do when it comes to the car. I'd get rid of it, start saving up. Uh, you can even do more than 300 if you want a month. It, it doesn't matter. Just Something, as long as there's something there. to Something that's yeah. actually moving a needle. You know, okay. if, it's a, if, if it's a few bucks, it's like, what's the point? Right, but fair enough. The savings, we already talked about that. 40000 in a high yield. And then since tax season's coming up, probably the rest of it, besides what you put yeah, on the I car. Yeah, I should probably just keep that there until I know. Not in the emergency fund, but in a separate bucket for taxes. Right. And then starting now, we're putting 30% aside into that bucket Okay. for taxes in the future. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, with the dependents, that helps. I've never, yeah. I haven't never. i really been super great at figuring out my taxes. We'll sit so. down with the CPA. It's worth, it's worth like 500 bucks to just get it all figured out. Okay. Uh, you'll, you'll probably save more in the long run than that $500 initial investment. So that is very worth it. All right. Now you on my to do list about. We'll get the retirement. I want to touch the college thing first. Okay. Is Ooh. there a college fund? Oh, okay. So this is really weird. So maybe um, I started a college fund for my kids when we lived in Virginia. It's like a five twenty nine savings plan, yep. and I put thirty dollars in for them, mm-hmm. and now they have thirty three dollars. Oh, it's very exciting. Um, so I have thirty three dollars saved for them, which would buy them all of. I think some pens, but I'm not sure. Maybe. Uh, maybe. Uh, it, would have, it would have bought this single pen. pen. Right. <laughs> They'll just have to keep up with the pen. Um, but, and here's, okay, so I know, think that my parents have some kind of college savings for my kids, but they've never told me about it. Other than well, saying we have a college savings, and then they tell my kids that they have a college savings, but I'm not sure if they're actually contributing or not. Is So one's graduating this Yeah, this year, year? in like... Yeah. What, what are their college plans? What have they talked about? MIT. Have they Yale, got accepted? Harvard. No, but they got deferred. They went early action and they got deferred for regular action. So that's super exciting because, you know, not a no is awesome. You're not going to like my thoughts on this. Oh, it's a 3.9 acceptance rate. He's not going to like it either. No, they're, or, yeah, both. Yeah. Okay. Um, so... So Harvard, Yale, Stanford, kind of your Ivy Leagues, um, their fallback is UT. Um, so that's really great because of their my income. fallback is what they should go to. I Either agree. Way. No, I agree. If they don't listen, then maybe you don't pay. Well, here's the kind of the neat thing is that all of those Ivy League schools, because of my income level, um, have free tuition. Okay. That is yeah. a different story. So now I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. Right on. Apply to all 100% of them. guaranteed. 
Yeah, it's all it's all need based. And if you make under a hundred thousand dollars a year, then it's it's free. Yeah, they do have ridiculous endowments. So yeah, no, are. it's fantastic. Even so I was like, I'll apply to all of them. Out of state. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. So if you get so to, I was like, all college, right. Yeah. No, that's great. Then I'm yeah. done for that. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, the other three are a different story though, because the other three have their father's income to deal with. The older one, all same dad. But the older one was thrown out of the house when they were 11. What were the ages again? 17, 14, 13, 11. Okay. Yeah. I told them they're going to have to marry rich. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. If they get free college. Well, incredible. one of them. Yeah, one of them. The 17-year-old. Will. Yeah. Uh-huh. Crossing my fingers. And they have the grades for it. And they well, have then, the scores, so. And then if not, and if they go to UT and it's not free, they're applying to every single scholarship. No, yes, mankind. 100%. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Yeah. One and thing, all of them are applying to scholarships. Good. Yeah. One thing I would do like tonight is I'd ring up the parents. Hey, someone's about to graduate. Can we get a <laughs> yeah. little more insight? Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Because that changes the whole conversation. Yeah, I think if it, you know, honestly, it's just felt like a really awkward conversation to have to be like, hey, just call in to see how much you're giving my kid for college. <laughs> well, you frame it a little um, different. You're yeah. like, hey, I am planning out what I'm going to do to support them throughout college. And, okay. you know, different college funds. I just, you've mentioned this in the past. I just want to know kind of what that picture looks like so I can, we can incorporate that into my planning and stuff like that. I think you need to send me a copy of the recording so I can just like <laughs> write that down <laughs> and like read it off a piece of paper. Oh, you can send this to yeah, uh, them as well. Yeah. yeah. I'll be like, hey, just check that out. We need to talk. <laughs> so that's really cool. And I hope they get that free concert. I'm rooting for that. Yeah, that's me awesome. too. The 14, I could see a point where no matter what the 11 year old does that you could have their tuition paid for if you really wanted really? to. I think so. We could get to, we could get to that point. Okay. I'm, uh, I'm open. Not to anywhere. Well, but no, to like no. two years of community and then two years at like Texas state. Yeah. Okay. Like well, that. I mean, I've always told them, Hey, all their grades are high. They're all straight A students. Good. They do a wonderful job. They participate in sports and clubs and things like that. And, um, all their own motivation, um, mm-hmm. so which is awesome. And I just was like, hey, there's lots of scholarships out there. You gotta, yes. you gotta take advantage. So, well, that's great. Then heck yeah, as much free stuff they can. Yeah, grab no, onto, that's great. So I'd love for them to get out without any debt. Yes, exactly. Because that was the main part of the conversation that I was going to go into, but it's just changed from, you know, all that we just learned in the past few minutes. So that that's great. Um, I think. As long as you agree with what they're doing and they're doing in college, any financial support you want to, that's fine. I want your diversion to be into retirement because it's going to be a little different. So there's a couple different ways to look at this. There is the, you can divert some of what you need to retire comfortably into paying for college if necessary, you know, and like, we, we don't know. It sounds like, you know, maybe that's maybe, not even I, I'm to be not a sure. thing. Yeah. But you could do that. However, that diverts from retirement. So what that ends up happening, though, it might feel good for them in the moment of not having to work or anything during college. Well, it will put a burden on them later because you won't be able to retire. And but, that puts a burden on right, kids. Right, and they're going to have to take care of me. So I almost prefer... If, let's say, college isn't fully taken care of, that they find ways to work through college and everything oh, like no, that. Oh, no, I think they should work through college. They should. Yeah. And pay for it while you're focusing on your retirement because when they're trying to build their careers at some point, trying to build their families, they're not going to have to worry about taking care of mom. As, yeah. You know, uh, they will thank me later for not helping them. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So <laughs> uh, <laughs> if the context is put out there just, and they understand. I mean, that, ultimately, yeah. I just want to be able to like, if my kids fall on hard times or they need help that I have something there and I can be like, hey, OK, don't sure. worry. I can give you half your rent this month. You're OK. Sure. Life's not going to fall apart. Also teach them the importance of an emergency fund. As yes. Well. And then yes. they that's something. We have that- actually already opened up accounts with them. So they actually have their own bank accounts and things like that. So that's cool. Yeah. They should never have to rely on you, but if you want right. to help, that's totally okay. I that's your a, money. It's a parental thing that yes. you just want to like hold those baby birds in a big nest and make sure they're okay. And it's your money. You can do whatever you want with it. We just don't yeah, want I them mean, to have to. Right. Right. No. Yeah. Yeah. If they have to, they got to come live back at home. Yeah. And nobody wants to do that. I know I tried that for a year. I've done it. So you could do okay. that. So again, I'm pretty comfortable with where, well, I wouldn't say I'm comfortable with college, but I think things are going to work out. I'm having that vibe okay, with them. And then... I feel better than the magic eight ball. Sure. Yeah. If they can't, if they don't get into a college that's free, if they're not getting all these scholarships, then be like, okay, 
I will support you, but if you go to community college. Right. No, no, no. Two years community college, get your basics down and then move on. Yeah, but not yeah. like, don't like be like, I'll support you no matter what. Like if you go to the right. most expensive well, school ever. The other three's father will help them too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Will? You know for a fact? No, but I'm going to make the assumption that's not a great assumption mm-hmm. given our history. Yeah, but I was going to say, on everything <laughs> I've heard so far. I was far, like, but I mean... He really loves his children, and that's really important. Good. Yeah. Okay. Well, hopefully he's saving up for that then, because that's also... I have no idea. So, and... Mm-hmm. I don't think he's spoken to me in eight years. Really? Well, yeah. What do you think you need to retire? In 20 years, if you just oh, retired in I mean, years. if you want... What do I really think I need? Uh, on an annual basis. How much money do you need on an annual basis? Oh, that's a good question. Um... Okay, so maybe I need like 50000 a year? 50, I mean, is my house paid for? Those are the questions. Is my house paid for, you know? How much is remaining on your home? I How think, many years? Uh, maybe Well, 17? you said you got it 10 years ago? Okay, so yeah. the house will be paid for. So the house should be paid for. I think we got a 20-year 20 20 mortgage. Um, oh, really? Okay. Does that sound standard? 15 or 15, 30. Or oh, 15 the, or 30? Typical, yeah. Oh, okay, so not 20. <laughs> um, yeah. Maybe 30 then? Probably a 30-year? Okay. But I mean, the other plan is to like make that extra mortgage payment every year just to principal. Just one extra? And then, right? I thought there was that like whole thing where if you make one extra payment to your principal, yeah, that it like knocks it down. Not, and I mean, It's not going to. Like it takes like change the several story. years off your mortgage. One payment a year? That would, I mean, oh, I guess I don't know the math. Like one extra payment. Head. I don't know. Maybe I read a that year? a long time ago. I don't know. Hmm. Okay. I don't know. What do most people need? Like, if it's just you as, like, a person, no, and that's I'm not, a, like, I'm that's thinking, like, 50000 a year seems no, f- pretty... No, 50000 a year in today's money, in today's worth yeah, of the dollar. Yeah, in today's worth of the dollar. I mean, that seems like I could live off of that. Maybe I'm not, like, taking expensive trips to Europe or anything, but, like, I mean, I don't really eat that much, and both my dogs will be gone by then. Oh, don't say that. Oh, that makes me sad. sad. We just don't talk about that. Okay. So I'm guessing I need $2.5 million. I'm seeing about $2 million. Okay. You'll be able to pull off like 3%-ish. Yeah, but I don't know where I'm getting $2 million dollars from. No, well, we're going to talk about compound growth and how to get okay. there. So right now, with where your account is at now and what you're invested in, in today's, well, $2 million in today's money, to be clear. Yeah. So that's what I'm doing the math off of. Let's see how much you'd have to invest on a monthly basis. Oh, no. The number's getting a little high. Yeah, I think I have to invest like... 27, 2800 a month mm. to make it to that. Mm. Make that about 3400 What? No. To make it in today's money. Today's money. So you like, how, I mean, inflation. for how many years? 20 years. 20 years? Yeah. 20 years. With what you're invested in taking those things out, I'm giving you an average rate of return of 8% than taking into account inflation for the value of money. Okay. I mean, yeah. Okay. So what it'll actually be probably... Probably ish around probably two point seven million in future money in twenty years, but we're talking inflation. So okay, all right. Yes, social security. We don't want to rely on that. Sounds like I need to get another job. Not necessarily. <laughs> okay, that's good. I mean, I think I could probably save like two thousand a month. Well, it depends how much you want to be able to, if you want to retire. Okay. Be able to retire. Yeah, I'm feeling like ramen. That'll get you Sounds six. Great. Well, that'll be sixty thousand dollars. So it's a little less to be fifty, but I was just doing some rounding up. Now I'm starting to feel nervous again. Like I should put in my goat milking application soon. So right now that'd be saving forty eight percent of your money, not including the child support. So take away child support, and this is forty eight percent. If you did what we talked about, um, thirty four hundred. Okay. Which is a big percentage like, to save. Okay. Yeah. No. 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 It makes me feel a little, um, a little warm. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is why it's we always talk about starting investing early, and of course you went through that yeah. horrible thing. But just for example, for the audience, okay. the best years of time com- you would just want the years of compound growth, yeah. and you're only if we're talking sixty five, going to be able to take advantage of only twenty years of compound growth, and that's right. annoying. <laughs> And that's annoying for you. But that is... Okay, well, I only talk about what I would do. I would understand that and understand the math around that, the way we've laid it out. And I would do it because I have to do it. Yeah. So I would 
just is what it is. Luckily, with your child support, you know, we're talking, this is going to bring it closer to like 35% of your income. And that's okay. not a terrible percentage of something. 35 of post-tax. 35%. Okay. Okay. No, and I feel like it's doable. It is. Yeah. That's where the monthly budget comes in. If you know, here's the pie of money I have, uh. divvy it out. We have a minimum four thousand four hundred dollars that we're putting into a brokerage. You know, we're maxing out Roth IRA every year, uh, or your traditional IRA, and we're you know you can max out well because the four hundred one k tax advantage. You know, probably try to get as much of it in there as well, so that'll be pulled from your three thousand dollar paycheck as well. So some of it there, and then the rest you can put into the brokerage. So you'll just have to math it out, and you can sit down with the financial advisor to okay uh, math it yeah. out in terms of where it's best to take from. Uh, so, but as much as we can take to put into your four hundred one k as well, for it's just, a way to go. Yeah, versus okay. putting in a brokerage, or the rest will be put into or a into like a savings account, right? No. Yeah. Okay. No, because no. that will just even if it's a high yield, will only be growing at three percent. We're at least growing at eight percent. This money has to grow at eight percent to meet the goals we want. Okay. In, okay. In this thirty four hundred dollars, but year. also keep that savings bucket. Not, yeah. not put it over there and then take it out if I need. No, what we already have for the emergency fund is fine, and then we're saving up for the car and we're saving up for the okay you know. one thing you can do and i wouldn't necessarily do it this way if you know a car is getting older but if a car breaks down you can just use the emergency fund to pay for like a twenty thousand dollar car in cash and then just an emergency save up as much money as possible to rebuild it to thirty forty thousand dollars okay eh. so that's up to you how you want to go about it i would rather have a car fund if i know the status of my car so it's just again this will come down to budget where is the money allocating and we're sticking to the strict rules that you set out for yourself? And right. then you could put $3,400 a month, I think, on this. Now, once all child support is gone, which is actually going to be a while because the youngest is 11 and then 13 above that. Right. So I have, you know, I have five years yeah. until it's really... We can take a look at making sure that those side hustles for the writing, you know, go from four thousand or go from three thousand on average to four thousand to five thousand on average. Anything like that helps. Okay. If you're, so, I get much more comfortable if the two thousand seven hundred starts being replaced through the writing through position, other things. Okay. If you can, yeah, no, that's um, definitely been a concern. Mm -hmm. But oh, and again, but my time will also free up, and I'll have more time to like work when you don't have to take care of four kids. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So the thing is coming to the end of this, my thoughts on this in terms of your anxiety, I think a lot of the anxiety is you just, you don't know. You yeah, know? yeah. Just, you don't know what retirement looks like. We don't know if we can afford the home. We don't know about paying for college. We don't know where our budget is. So these, the more you can structure these things, having this concrete budget Knowing what we're saving to meet a retirement goal, which we can hit, if you put that money aside, it gets rid of these anxieties, and I think you can, you'll can you be in a good place. I think you're in an okay place now. I think we get to a good place by just structuring some of this out. Okay. Okay. Well, that makes me feel better. Yeah. Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> now it just takes the step of actually doing it. Like right. paying off yeah. the car. Yeah. Yeah. No, now it's just kind of like, like you said, like kind of figuring out to think about it from a different perspective than I've been coming from mm -hmm. and be like, oh, okay, how do I maximize and make everything work? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you can sit down with whoever your representative is at this investing platform. I'm not sure that who that is as well. Um, and if they suck, then I would transfer it to someone who doesn't suck. No, I like the guy so far. Oh, good. So good. Yeah, okay, yeah. He's cool. been really nice. So cool, cool. And make sure that you're trying to at least get something that averages out on a 10 year average of at least 8%. 8%. I would try to go for that okay. 10%, which I don't like having everything only in one thing, but the S&P 500 on average gives you that 10%, just over 10% on average. Okay. So that's that's where you stand in my shoes. I think you have a good path forward. It just comes down to discipline, structuring things, and stuff like that. Do you okay. have, What are your final thoughts? Well, I'm feeling better. I'm feeling a little better. I, I mean, the fear of the unknown is just so hard. Like, you're just like, well, what does life look like? later and I think that's something that's been causing me like a lot of anxiety so this makes me feel better knowing like hey it is possible it's going to take a little bit more elbow work and that's okay I don't mind a little bit more work um, but knowing like oh okay having that number in my head and being like okay let's try to get that into an account because it's going to be better later will be um that makes me feel better just like okay I've got a goal I can hit it again and again and again <laughs> <laughs> 
For Brooke, her overall financial position is pretty okay, pretty middle of the road. Uh, that debt situation, she's going to take care of it today then, debt-free except for the house, so that's really good. She just needs to save a little more for retirement to kind of catch up with the money being stolen and everything like that. So right now, Hammer financial score, 6 out of 10, but it will quickly be a 7 and an 8, if not a 9 and a 10 in the coming years. Make sure to check out all the fun links in the description, including my Twitter and Instagram. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks.